Welcome to the Bad Beat Podcast. I'm your host, Robert Eisenstadt, and today uh, we have Dylan Georgian on the show with us. Dylan, thank you so much, man, for joining us. Uh, it's a real treat to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I think uh, to meet you. I think we're going to talk about some pretty cool shit and just flow and, and you know, kind of go through your story, where, you, where you've been. I mean, your business is absolutely amazing. Thank you. I've been, uh, I've been following you on social media for a long time. I think Aaron Gazle is the one who pointed me to you. Nice. Uh, cabinet sellers. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's, he's an awesome dude. He, he was actually on here a couple weeks ago too. Um, but yeah, man. So we, uh, we were just talking about how we like to flow with this and, and just kind of go with it. So that's right. When did you start your business? You, you started it when you were, uh, 18, 18 so just 2012 in February selling grass on a, on Craigslist on a Craigslist. Yep. I thought it was on a corner or something. I don't know. Basically I went and, uh, rented this like little, concrete lot for like 1200 bucks a month that in the office and would go back to back east and buy scraps from all the manufacturers so um stuff they wanted to get rid of and turn back into cash they call it like remnants and seconds and different things yeah. like that and they just wanted to get out of their warehouse so we'd buy it for pennies on the dollar bring it back to uh this little lot and sell it on craigslist what made you do that so I met a guy back when I was 16. So at the time I was working at a spot called Gin Sushi in Temecula washing dishes and um, did that for a while. And I was just ready for the next thing. And um, as this is all going on, I, um, I was into like buying and selling cheap cars and dirt bikes and stuff like that. And uh, found a really cool looking dirt bike one that I wanted on Craigslist and met this guy. His name's Bob, same age as my parents. Uh, and talked to him for like two hours when I was buying this bike. And he's just like, hey, man, um, go test the bike. Go ride it if you like. Come back and pay me. I was like, whoa, you know, what? that's, yeah, it's kind of different. So I'm like, this is a good dude. And so I uh, stayed in contact with him. And he had a son that's a little bit younger than I am. And we started riding motocross together and started learning mm -hmm. about each other. And he became like a friend. You know, it's kind of weird because I was 16, 17, and the guy's same age as my parents. And um, just was help helping like talk to me and mentor me through different things in life and started going on like vacations with them and different things like that. Really? Yeah. And then, um, he had a car lot in Fontana and I started buying cars for his car dealership on commission only and did very well doing it. Cause that's, that was my background at the time. Uh, and I got 300 paid 300 bucks a car. Just like buying and selling. Yeah. So no overhead. Yeah. Nothing. So he, he owned the car dealership and I'd go find the car with his money and you give me $300 for every car that I found that fits inside the budget and criteria. What? And so doing that for a little bit, like right when I started having like early success and I'm sure we'll probably get into this. Like I jumped immediately and said, Hey, like I want I'm going to go do this. And I quit my job and, um, started doing it and did very well for washing the dishes. Yeah. Washing, washing the dishes. dishes. Yeah. And so started doing very well. And I'm like, dude, I'm making like good money, you know, and I was, I was pumped and, um, then I couldn't find any more like cars to find. And he didn't like just like the regular old, you know, car. It had to be something custom, like a truck you drive, a truck like I would drive with wheels and tires and look sexy. You yeah. know, that was his business model and it dried up and I couldn't find any cars for like a couple of weeks. So my income went to nothing. And I was like, Hey man, is there anything else you have going on here that I could do? Maybe something hourly, whatever. And he had some turf at the back of his lot. And he, he would go out there and do it on the side. He'd sell and cut turf and have it delivered. And he's like, hey, I'll pay, you know, 10 bucks an hour to come up here to, it's in Fontana. I lived in Temecula, so the drive's like a little bit over an hour. And I would go up there and I was his yard guy. And I would cut turf during the day and go and deliver it in the afternoons to his customers and did that hourly. And did that for like three months. And I was always picking his brain and trying to learn more and more and more and more. And, um, he, you know, he must have saw something in me that triggered him and said, Hey, let's, uh, let's go do this together in Temecula. He's like, you have any money? And I was like, yeah, I got like 35 grand. And, um, we, so we had a meeting and started talking about it and different things like that. I talked to my parents and they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely not. Like this sounds like a fraud, right? Um, guy is same age as them. I'm just a kid, you know, just washing dishes. There's not, I, there wasn't a lot of me at the time. I'm, I'm really two different people from when I was 18 and who I am today, there's a lot of growth that has happened. You stacked 35 grand at 18 years old. Yeah. Dude, people, a lot of people in their fifties don't have 35 grand. Yeah. So good I know. for you. What, what do you yeah. think? Uh, like what do you, what made you be able to do that? So I mean, you obviously accrued that from washing dishes, right? 
uh, no, it wasn't just washing dishes. So like at the age of seven, we would sell, I would sell like dirt bikes. Um, and I like, it was my first dirt bike at seven years old that I sold. And you know, and like that, I don't know if you're familiar with like the cycle trader. Yep. It was all like magazines. You'd go to do a gas station and buy this magazine. We'd yep. call them and they'll come out and take the picture. You tell them what you want to write in your ad. And my dad's like, Hey, like, let me teach you how to do this. And so when people would come, he would kind of stand back and let me have the conversation when I was selling this dirt bike. And he'd coach me and say, hey, like, you know, they're going to negotiate, right? And how to negotiate and do those different things. But he's like, you dropped down 100 bucks. You know, I was going to pay probably $8 an hour pulling weeds and doing different stuff like that. He's like, that's that's how many hours of work you got to put in. So I got very good at the art of negotiation on when you have to sell something. And then after that, then, you know, I was moving up to the next dirt bike. So from like the 70 to the 85, right? And then when we'd go find 85, he would teach me then how to negotiate. And we would do the equation on um, the cost of negotiation versus my what my hourly rate was helping my dad around the yard or doing chores and different things like that. Like how much you would lose or like the difference between you working for your dad and the amount you're losing by negotiating down? Yeah, exactly. Or when I'd buy, right? If I get 500 bucks off, that's you know, whatever, that's 50 hours of work right there. So 50 hours of work as a kid, I mean, that's like one yeah. to two months of work. So if I was able to pull off 500 bucks, then I'm able to get back that much time. And so I started really liking, I was like, this is pretty cool. So then I was riding dirt bikes and stuff for fun, but then I was able to start selling them and making money and then negotiate and make a few hundred bucks here and there. And then started doing it with cars, two old cars and buy them, clean them up, pretty them up and then put them on different marketplaces to sell from there. Good for both of you. Yeah. Thanks. It was pretty cool. And your dad for, you know, that, that that's awesome that you had that, uh, that mentor in your life to be able to show you something like that. You know what I mean? Like for sure, especially at such a young age. Yeah. It was a, I had a different upbringing. Um, my parents, I don't have that like sad story that people have saying, you know, my parents were never around. We grew up poor. Like I grew up like very, very well. We did cool vacations lived in a cool place. Um, my parents did well. I didn't. So they got to put like the carrot in front of me and I got to go like have this cool life with them. Um, but I didn't get that. Like this so, is what you could have if you work your ass off. That's right. So like, um, there's a lot of things I missed out on. I think that, which like gives me the fire today. Um, as a kid, like I'd get home from school and I would do minimum of two hours of work every single day. So we lived out in like the country and I had a lot of buddies that would go ride motocross and different things like that in the afternoon. I could, I can't even count the number of times I missed out on going and riding because I had to get my work, my chores done before I could do anything. And that caused me missing out on fun a lot of times. Yeah, but it taught you so much discipline. Yeah. I wish uh, if I could only like take something back, it'd be to understand why I was going through that versus I thought, you know, my dad was just being hard on me, and that's just the way it was, right? Yeah, you were probably pissed off back then, huh? Yeah, I was, I was super pissed off. <laughs> uh, but it motivated, you know, because it's like um, like we'd go in, I think it's like the Dickie store or whatever, you get these little like plain shirts that are like three or five bucks. Yep. Like that, those were my shirts, you know? And got like 10 of them, you're 30 bucks in shirts, we'll have one pair of shoes and a couple pair of pants, and then I have people over at our house, like for the weekend, some of my buddies, and like, what the, why are you driving this? why do you dress like this? You know? And I'm like, that's my parents, you know? What do you mean? Like they would, they were judging you because you were, well, they were thrown off. Like I drove a, a $200 car, like a 1971 Mercedes 220 diesel for about it for 200 bucks. Like you can't just like turn the ignition and start the car. You have to like pull out the go glow plug, wait 20 seconds for the glow plugs to get warm. And then it fires up and starts. Hmm. So I was like, I didn't look like I had anything and I didn't, right? But then we go to my house and my parents had like a cool spot and all that stuff. And they're just like, I don't get it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't either. You know, friends had gas cards. I didn't. There's a lot of times I couldn't, I couldn't even afford to go into town or I couldn't go out to dinners or I couldn't go to the movies, different things like that because I just didn't have the funds to go ahead and do it. But obviously that served me um, in the long run, you know? I do not ever judge people. You never know. Yeah, for sure. And I I mean, like, you know, I I firmly believe that everything happens for a reason. Um, Just anything in life, period. You know, like whether you leave your wallet behind at home or you drop your keys or whatever, like those two seconds. Uh, I had a guest on the show um, a while back, and he was talking. Did you ever hear about the cop 
that got killed on the freeway out here by yeah. the I-beam. So there's a cop out here that got killed. Uh, a semi-truck clipped an I-beam, and it perfectly was timed to go through the windshield and kill, kill the police officer. Whoa. It was absolutely horrible. But, I mean, and it's, and it's really hard to look at that and say, okay, what was the reasoning behind that? I mean, I, I believe everybody has their time and stuff, you know? Yep. Um, but to take something like that and, and just realize that everything does happen for a reason, you know, and you say you don't re- you didn't realize you know or you were pissed off back then you wish you understood what was being taught to you yep you know and it, and even in today's life the struggles that people go through that you'll go through that I'll go through or whatever it is yeah I think it's really hard to realize like God damn I'm so stressed out or whatever the fuck it is and and it's trying to show you something for sure there's you something just you need to learn from it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I look for those opportunities now. Like, I, I hunt for them on, like, what's the problem? Like, if things are going well, something's off. You know, like, you you have to find the things that are messed up because that's how you can grow. That's how you can learn. Shit always comes at, the wor- at the, like, the best time, too. Yeah. I feel, like, I feel like it always comes at, like, when things are going perfect, it comes crashing down like a house of cards. For sure. And but if you build your expectation to deal with that, right, like, if you – if you wake up every day knowing that you're going to face shit today, then if you don't face it, like it's just an even better day. But if you set your expectation there and say, I'm happy no matter what, I'm going to deal with problems and issues and opportunities, whatever you want to call it, like you, that just needs to be the expectation. But I think a lot of people set that their expectation on, hey, like I'll be happy when things are perfect. There's no such thing of that. Yep. And so just like face, like find the hard stuff and do what's hard and, you're going to become a very strong, well-off, successful, you know, you name it. I 100% agree with you. I try to wake up every morning with, you know, 100% gratitude, just thankful to be alive. Yep. You know, I mean, it's, it's, and it's hard to do sometimes. Yeah. You got to think about time. I mean, you talk about that story that just happened. You don't know when your ticket gets punched, right? Yep. So if you live life and a lot of people live life, think they don't think about time. They think about Hey, it's just another day. It's another day. It's another day. But if you like, uh, like I've talked about it in in different shows, but I think about like dying a lot, you know, not in a negative way. It just helps me understand how serious time is and that we don't have a lot of it and it's fragile and you have to be very intentional with every second of it. And so if you're living with time and um, you're unhappy, you're depressed, whatever, like, and you're just like, well, we'll see if tomorrow's better. Well, what if tomorrow doesn't show up for you? Yep. And that's, that's helped trigger me. Like I, I'm a deep guy, but that's, I've have to go that deep a lot of times to make an adjustment and say, Hey, like, it's not the biggest situation, man. You you know what I'm saying? Like you think, you think things are bad, right? If it's going on in business or a relationship or whatever, and you, you tie your emotions to it and be like, Hey, like, and you start freaking out, right? You start obsessing over it. Overthinking. Yeah, but then you hear a story about what you just talked about or something else. You're like, dude, I don't have any problems. Like, what what's going on, right? What do you uh, What do you practice to help keep you so like level headed? Like, do you? I mean, obviously, you're in the gym all the fucking time. You, you completed seventy five hard, right? Yeah, I exercise I'll exercise a lot. I think it's um, I think I just been through so much stuff. Um, you know, I've been in business only for like 11 years going, going to be on my 12th year pretty soon. Um, what? Yeah. So oh, I'm, I'm 29. Oh. I started when I was 18. So I'm 30 next year. Um, but just when you go through so much stuff, you get used to like nothing could really phase you. Like you expect all these things to happen and go on. And, um, when you let your, like, it's just experience with anything. Right. So, Earlier, like I said, I'm two different people from when I was 18 and who I am today. Like, absolutely, we have this conversation five, six years ago. Like, I could get a text before this and not even want to come in here and have the conversation because I'm so frustrated and emotionally tied to it. But how does that serve me? You know, you know, and a lot of people look at just your success, and I just want to tell you right now, from in in the past 10 years, for you to build what you have. I can't even imagine the amount of shit and hard work that yeah, you've put you. in. So I got so much respect for you. Thanks, man. I mean, it's a lot. It's so much, and people don't see that. No, they they see where it is today and be like, oh, you know, it must be this or must be that, and it's like, the, it, it's even today. I mean, still today, like we have a, a couple hundred people that work for us, and uh, we do really well. But it's still 
it's a grind. Yeah, it's I hard. Mean, you know? Systems and like just even systems, just implementing systems into your business That's is, right. is, is a struggle, you know, for like sure. Employees and in, like insurance and, you know, client relations and it just all of this stuff yep. that, you know, and being a business owner, you have to play 20 different fucking roles. That's right. And nobody sees that. They see you out on the weekends or whatever doing fucking wheelies in your sand car. Yep. And they're like, oh, man, his life is good. It's like, yeah, my life is good, motherfucker. But yeah. I put in I don't know how many hours. For sure. To be able to do this. Yeah. And I don't listen to anybody. There's there's a lot of people out there that are, are with the movement and different things that we're doing. And then there's some people that are um, that, that don't like it, right, that might say some bad things and different stuff like that. But um, good people don't talk about yep. other people. You know what I'm saying? So, like, when some some of that stuff's going on, like, a lot of times I pray for those people. I reach out to them, say I could help them because that's just a – I've been there before in my, my younger years and that's a bad spot to be in. Um, like you, you want to support people and support their wins and you never know when you're going to need that resource or that person They're You know, a lot of times they're living a life that you want to live. And a lot of those people are willing to help you out to help you get there. You never know? burn bridges. That's right. And right. so like, if you could, uh, like kind of going back to what we were talking about, if you could, um, like, you fit, like build your own battles, um, and that's what I talk to my team and coach my team about every day is uh, we're leading in different ways. And we talk about, you know, like different sports teams that are leading, right? That were because um, business is a sport and we'll get into that in a, in a little bit, hopefully. But you have these different sports teams that come out of nowhere and they're leading and now they're on the map, right? And when they're on the map, um, they all have a target on their back where people are trying to understand what they're doing to mimic and better their plays, and it's the same thing in business when you're leading, you know, there's no, like, you can't Google and say, what's the best org chart for my business? How do I market for my business? How do I lead a team? What should my operation look like? How much cash flow do I need? It's um, like, you got to learn it and you got to keep, you know, tweaking and playing and tweaking and playing. And the next thing you know, you build this good formula. Well, the thing is, is if you operate with that same plan and that same formula, we well, have the target on your back and everybody else in the industry is going to start watching your success and instead of them, you're their Google, right? They're going to watch everything you're doing and try to mimic that. So if you're not bringing, like if you could bring your own battles into business, bring your own battles into your life and fight your own fight, you're always going to stay ahead because what they're trying to duplicate is an old model, old things that you've been through. But if you, a lot of people will find their way to like success and then they say, I made it. And then it usually goes away because other people will go figure out what they did and duplicate what they did. And now they're having to battle at the game that they built that they're kind of out of because they're doing different things in their life. And for that, that entrepreneur, that leader to come back in and fix it, their competitor is already so far past them that they just don't know what to do. And a lot of people go under. So in business and in life, if you could bring your own battles in and you could put the pressure on yourself and compete with yourself every single day, you don't have to worry about anybody else. You're going to win. And that's what I do in my business life and also my personal life. And it starts with exercise. Like I, I go and exercise quite a bit. I'm not the buffest dude, but I'm pretty fit, especially from just having surgery recently. And I go and beat the shit out of myself in the gym because that's I feel like that's the hardest thing for me. Yep. To go by yourself, no trainer, no coach, and just go grind your face off where you're uncomfortable. And you get through that, the rest of the day is a breeze, you know. Back when I was in the store doing that, I'd get all my cold calls done. I hate, I hated doing cold calls, so do that first, right? right? So, like, bring your battles, win your own battles. The shit that people, you know, the battle, other battles that come across your desk, you're going to be calm all the time because you're used to operating in that battlefield. Yep, I'm the same way. I, anything that's hardest in my day, I'm like, all right, let's say I have a list. I Usually, I'll wake up and I'll, or I get to the office or whatever, and I'll take a sticky note, and let's say I got ten things that I have to get done in the in the in the daytime. Yeah, I'll write down my ten things. I'm like, all right, what's the hardest thing that's first? I got to get that done first because everything else after that is just a breeze. It's just easy. Exactly. And I, you know, it's been hard to get my wife to do the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's uh, a hard thing. Is when you like learn something, then you want to share it with everybody else to to learn it, right? Yeah. You know, and you touched base on the on the getting rid of people that talk bad. Mm -hmm. or you know about other people or whatever uh were you were you like surrounded by a group of people that just was like super negative or 
there's been ups and downs. Um, I haven't had that like big negative group or a turning of friends or anything like that. Um, but you know, the business I compete in, it's, it's a newer industry, but it's still been around for a while and there's, there's big, big groups in it. Right. And so when I was a kid, um, like at a kid in age, trying to get it started and going to manufacturers and trying to get product, you know, a lot of people didn't even take the time to want to sell us product. Why? It was 18 years old, 19. They're like, this is like, who's a person, right? Yeah, basically. And that I had to go, like trying to get leases and different things like that, you know, go in a meeting with somebody and kind of always dress the same, like in a t-shirt. And it was just like, ah, like, you know, they wouldn't give me the time of the day. You're doing this all by yourself? I had Bob with me. Oh, really? Yeah, we partnered together for like the first two and a half years. And then I was able to buy him out of the business. And then, yeah, just go execute by myself from there. Wow. Well, obviously, I have an amazing team, but yeah, as no. far as, like, shares and stuff. Damn. See, there's there's so much shit that people just don't realize. Yeah. <laughs> and I so like, many struggles. Yeah, and if people are, like, um, like for all of you guys listening, if somebody ever, like, talks about you, that means you're doing something right. Like, you're worth their time, worth their energy. You're in their head. Um, and so that's a good thing. If your name's getting brought up, like, that's free advertising for me, right? And like I said earlier, like, good people don't talk bad about other people. And I just like, if my name's getting brought up, like there's, um, there's, a, I think a couple people in our industry that just, that don't like, um, our company, uh, and we get tons and tons of business from it cause they are marketing our name and people are like, huh, something must be going on, going on over there. And they call us and next thing you know, we got a customer. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, that was a super hard battle for me. I went yeah. from having this massive group of people in my life. To like three. Yeah. That's all good too, man. It's <laughs> oh, just, you, you only got so much time, right? It was the best decision I ever made in my life. Yeah. I mean, I I don't have any drama in my life. Everybody around me is positive, you know, and you get in this circle of people that talk about their goals and their ambitions and where they want to go in life. Yeah, and it's not surface conversations. It's deep. Where yep. It's like fun to be into the conversation. Absolutely. Right? Family, you know, family super important to me. Um, you know, I have a five-year-old daughter. Oh, and that's awesome. Yeah, and just like, you know, my best friend, he's got two girls close to the same age, so it's like anybody else that is just negative and want to talk about other people, if if I believe if you have anybody in, like that in your life, just fucking get rid of them, and it's a lot easier said than done, yep. but it's going to be the best decision you'll ever make. For sure. I so, mean, like, I... So yeah, that, that happens like every once in a while where it's just like, you just can't get somebody across a bridge. But a lot of times, like I'll take that as opportunity and be like, I like, I like to look at people as like, when I talk to somebody, I think of them as like a baby, like, cause I like that's how we all were. And then as we grow and become adults, um, our character becomes who our influence, it, we become who our influence is like taught us. Right. So uh, we've all had different mentors in our life, whether we know it or not, that influence us to be the way we are today, our good habits and our bad habits, right? And so if I come across somebody that is, you know, completely, like, far out, like, dude, you, you were, like, completely wrong, right? Yeah. Um, I try to see if I could help correct them and get them back to, like, real and basic because, like, we all came out uh, and we were all babies once and laughing and crying and didn't know all the stuff we know today. And something shifted us along the way, and that's, you know, it could, good or bad people. So a lot of times people had bad parenting, bad influences that got them to there. And I like to see, like, if I'm a good leader, if I could help push them back to, like, reality and get them, you know, operating the way they should. That's interesting. It takes a lot of, it takes a lot of patience to do it, though. It's a lot of energy. Yeah, but it's like in, in business and, in like, I, I know I'm probably going to go thing, go through more things in business, right? I'm going to go through things with my, I have two daughters as they grow up where it's going to be a challenge, right? Who knows if they're dating some guy I don't like and different things like that. So I get to practice every day right now on people that I'm not aligned with to see if I could influence them and get them steered in the right direction. And if I could keep practicing that in everyday life right now, when the real shit ha- comes in front of me that I need to make those big decisions on, hopefully I've learned enough to be able to just so much energy though like i don't understand how you are able to manage just i mean dude you're doing hundreds of millions of dollars in 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 business in a year yeah a year yeah and 
I mean, me being a business owner, I understand like how stressful that can be with all the systems, the employees, the customers. Yeah. I mean, you're in multiple locations across the United States, right? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of stuff going on. And it's just like, how do you delegate that energy to somebody that is being so negative about you? Yeah. To try and like, instead of just being like, look, if, if, if you want to be that way, then be that way. Yeah. And I understand you want to help people, but if they're going to be so like bad to you. Yeah. I won't take like my whole life to help change somebody, but I'll try to like, I like to ask people questions back. Like, Hey, do you like, I understand your point, but do you understand how you're coming off? Like it, I'll repeat it back to him. Is like, is this exactly what you mean? I got gotcha. you. And, and then I'll ask, say, why, what, why? And then I keep going deeper and deeper and then you get to the root of it, and most of the time that's not what they meant or how they want to be. You'll find out that they're dealing with, like, an internal battle, something that's going on, and if you could fix it with them, like, that's a true leader, yeah. you know? And I'm, in business, it's all about people. It's not about data and numbers, all the different stuff. Like, that's how I manage everything is I have a lot of really, really good people that my mm-hmm. team invests into me, I invest into them, and that's how we, we operate and get to that next level. Yep. But I come off, I'm sure, wrong or all that stuff all the time. Well, you see, everybody in life has a completely different perspective. Everybody has a completely different reality, right? Like even us sitting in this room right now, this seems so different to you and foreign to you than it does to me, right? And, uh, you know, I have a friend that uh, showed some exercise to me and I've used it with my employees or friends or whoever it is. And uh, it was, you know, we think of a word right now, let's say... Uh, school okay and we write down the very first three things that come to mind no matter what it is whether it's bus or teacher whatever it is the very first three three things that come to your mind and every time I've done that with anybody there's been completely separate answers that's right and it's like okay we both looked at the exact same thing but we had two completely separate answers. Yep. So the way that I'm looking at things and the way that you're looking at things are two completely different sides. hundred percent. So, you know, when you can start to break down that reality of, Hey, we're two completely different people. We're two completely separate realities, different perspectives. It, it, it really opens up. Dude, it's a trip. So much. Yeah, like, spot it, on. It, it's fucking crazy. I yeah, love doing that. You're spot on, man. You, there's, there's more similarities in people than anybody thinks. And, a lot of people quit at the first word or so, somebody does something wrong and they just quit on people, right? You th- yep. like, I don't even know what the marriage divorce rate is right now, but it's probably insane. And people, they're just, they quit, right? Things get uncomfortable and they're just like, ah, I don't got time, like I'm over it. But like I always ask people, what if you can't quit? Like what, it, what if like it's death? Like you, you have to die when you quit. What would it look like? Damn, I never thought of that. And then you start going through it, and then you find out, like, the it's, it's going to be very uncomfortable. But if you have to find a way to get through it, like, that's where success is born. I'm sure, like, in your business, right, there's been days where you're just like, dude, I'm fucking done. Oh, yeah. And then you go to bed, and you wake up, and, like, I'll give another day. Yep. You know, and, like, what, what, what would your life look like if you quit right then? And so if you think of that with, like, other people, like, and you just, like, yeah, there's a lot of times where I'm just like, fuck, dude. Like, why am I having this conversation right now? Like, I don't, I don't want to do this. Like, um, but if, I, hey, if I can't quit, like, what's it going to look like? And then you, I've been able to see a lot of changes in some people's life where I've almost quit on them and where they are today. And that's what, like, fulfills me and satisfies me. So, like, I know there's, there's something in everybody that, like, it's, like, if we, like, you're obviously successful and done a lot of things right. So, like, if you're able to figure that out, why can't they, right? Like, they where you were, would say, 10, 12, 15 years ago, you're probably in a whole lot different place now, right? And so if you're able to learn it, why can't somebody else? And so if they, a lot of people have their guard up, different things like that, and it's just knowing how to pull that back and get them there, dude, it's the best feeling ever. I think change is just, like, right after that point of being uncomfortable, just like you said. For sure. And it, it's funny because I just had mentioned that perspective thing. And I, I tell this to my wife. My wife uh, races motocross. And oh, you ride awesome. motocross too. Yeah. So, you know, when you're doing a wheelie on a bike or even in your car or whatever it is, that balance point is right past that oh shit mark. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like the same thing in life. Right past that oh shit, this is super uncomfortable, you get success. That's right. 
You know what I mean? Yep. So it's like I do everything I can to be as uncomfortable as possible. I'll walk up and talk to whoever it is. I don't care. I mean, I'm not a huge fanboy over like famous people, yeah. but you know, it's like the, why not? Yeah, what, what what's the worst that's gonna happen? They're gonna say that's no right. or whatever. Like you know what I mean? I ran into Shaq at the gym like a couple weeks ago, and I was like, "Yo, dude, I gotta get you on my podcast." <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I'm like looking up to him. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I got his email. We'll, we'll see. But, like, you know, a lot of people are like, ah, I don't want to talk to him. Like, what if they say no? Yeah. What if they say yes? That's right. Like, what, seriously, what if? Yeah, well, what if you don't talk to them? Yeah. Like, what's the reality going to look like? You're really all a couple conversations away from our life changing in a good way. Abs- Ed Milet, the power yeah. of one more, you know, one, yeah. one phone call, one relationship, one meeting. That's right. From absolutely changing your entire life. For sure. I mean, and this room is is a prodigy of that. I went to that event, and so let's do it changed it. my life. That's so I mean, cool, man. You know, just and it's just you got to take those little baby steps to just get as uncomfortable as possible. Yeah, you know, I mean, just anything. And it's uh, like a lot of people they they're probably listening. And they're like, ah, you guys are fucking crazy. But like I tell people, um, like we've all been through different things in life that were uncomfortable, and we've all have made it through. And most of the time end up in a better place. Like I think everybody has that story or an example of it could even be something small from middle school or high school of having to do this one assignment and then you make it through and you're like, oh, you know, it wasn't that bad. Yep. And that's how everything is in life. If it's that diet that changes your physique, if it's the business that you wanted to start, like you just have to go and apply yourself. And um, as we get older, it's, you know, a lot of people get stuck in their ways where they don't want to apply their self. They want to live in comfort. Well, that's totally fine if you're completely happy where your life is today. Um, but if you're not happy where your life is today, you have to, the only way to make it change is you have to force that change and go through those uncomfort times. So let me ask you something. You're obviously very comfortable yeah. with your life right now. What pushes you to wake up in the morning and push even harder? Yeah, I want to be a lot better in every aspect. I want to be a better dad. I want to be better at business. I want to be in better shape. Um, I want to impact more lives. And I feel like I'm, you know, I don't feel like I am. I'm 29 and have been grinding for 11 years. And I feel like I have a big advantage on time right now compared to a lot of people. And I feel like it's my obligation to um, see how far I could push it and where I could, you know, bring life. And I, I operate a little bit in fear. Like if I stopped, you know, um, like what would happen in my life? Everything in business and everything in the gym has developed me to be a good dad, a good husband. Um, like I used to be a quitter. Like when things got hard, like everything, the whole opposite side of what we're talking about today, that's who I used to be. Um, and so like I get like an athlete, right? When they stop playing, you start seeing them gain weight and things start changing. They become an alcoholic, different things like that. And so I have the fear of that stuff happening in my life if I ever let off the gas. And so for me to be a good dad, a good husband, and serve people in my personal life, like businesses, it pays me and teaches me that at the same time. And um, I just want to prove to like society that exactly all the kind of content we're talking about today, if you apply yourself and you could face the uncomfort and you could just get through day by day by day, you could build anything you want to build. So I know like there's a, a good group of people that watches every action that I do and I would be quitting not just on me, I'd quit on everybody else. And so like, yeah, I like to dress normal, be normal, talk normal, do normal things. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, have, you know, success in, in business and different things like that to show people like you don't, you know, you don't have, there's not a, a special pill to, to be that way. You don't have to be a superhuman, like you could be completely normal and go execute and i want to you know lead america and society and say like you guys could do it man it wasn't it wasn't that hard and like if you ever go to like my facebook from like you could see stuff i posted in high school you'd understand the big difference of like change that happened like i was uh yeah i was like below average of a person you know what like you how like how i thought things i did things i said just super emotional immature just different things like that. Just Everybody I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like know myself, you know, just trying to figure it out. And so I leave a lot of that stuff up just to show people like this is like, this is my life journey. And if you want to make the change, like 
it's not that complicated. It just takes action. You know what's crazy? What's that? We're the same age. That's awesome, man. You know the difference between us? What's that? A lot of discipline. Yeah. On your Thanks, side. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. And uh, even though it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, yeah, that's the truth. Truth is, you've had an immense amount of discipline, um, some very serious goals that you've wanted to kill, and you've done it. Yeah. Uh, not to say that I haven't, um, uh, but just being honest with myself, I haven't been as disciplined as you. Yeah, that's awesome. Man. And there's a, it shows, yeah, right? Thank you. I am successful, not as successful as you, and that's totally okay. Everybody's on there. I'm, I'm not comparing my chapter four. Yeah, you got to compete with yourself. Right. It's me against me every day. That's right. I don't ever want to compare my chapter four to somebody else's chapter eight. You know what I mean? 100%. But just, just hearing you talk just now, it's just like, damn, dude, like this guy has just fucking grinded. Dude, and, it's a lot, man. And just stuck so hard through all of this discipline mm-hmm. and made very hard decisions. That's right. Dude, so I, vaca- I vacation less as the years go on than I used to. That's my problem. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, that's my problem, right? So there's a, when you, co- when you say success, there's, there's a lot of different success, right? Absolutely. You could talk financial, you could talk family, you could talk relationships, whatever, just success is really whatever makes you happy. Um, but you know, like I, as like times went on in business, I'm working more and vacationing less. And so that's like my next chapter to, to figure out. I had some things set up that didn't, um, execute the right way. So I'm kind of in that next rebuild phase and I'm, probably like a year out from getting another breath. Um, but that's just how it goes, man. It's like you, you think you get to these different levels and you get some time back, but as you get to these different levels, you come across this opportunity or this risk in business and different things that you have to execute where you don't have the time to like fuck off. Did you have a lot of time to fuck off during those earlier years? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I fucked off a lot. That makes me feel so good. Yeah. <laughs> I hope you know. <laughs> yeah, no, I fucked off a lot in the, the beginning. But I still got my work done. Yeah. But, I mean, there's times where I missed work. I missed plenty of meetings. I was hung over, you know. Really? Yeah. And it just, I had a lot of fun. Like, I don't regret it. What's, I don't regret that whatsoever. It was a good time. But then when it got time to, hey, like, I need to take this extremely serious and get yep. to the next level. And, um, you know, thank God for, you know, the 75 hard and, it podcasts like this, that stuff that you put out and we talk about is through other people's stories. You know, I listen to a lot of Andy, a lot of Ed. Yep. I still do, but like you go like four, five, six, yeah, probably five years back and started listening to them. I'm like, huh, like this is interesting. And you start like, when you start listening to them, you start seeing a lot of similarities, but you also see a lot of differences. And if you're like, Hey, if I could close up a couple of these things, can my life look like theirs? And then I started to do that, you know, and I started asking my questions on why am I making an excuse? Why am I not exercising every day? Why am I eating like this? And then I started becoming a lot more serious about like myself. And when I started focusing on me and developing me and discipline and all those different things you said, everything around me changed at the same time. Because you can't, you can't be one character at home and in your personal life and a different character in business. Like those characters are the same, Yep. whether you try to portray it different or not like that, that stuff equals each other. So if I'm showing up late to work or miss some meetings and having a ton of fun at night and not performing a hundred percent, my business is going to perform that same way. Yep. hundred percent. You know, you said, uh, you said something that just resonated with me. Um, you said, you know, you got to be the same person at home or in your business or whatever it was. I remember going to this job interview and I was so nervous. I don't don't remember who it was for, but I was so nervous to go talk to these people. This was years back. Yeah. And my buddy was like, why are you so nervous? Just talk to them. Like you would talk to any of your friends. That's right. And that just clicked with me. And that has helped me build so many relationships with you know, CEOs that we do business with or whatever That's it right. was, you know, and it's, it's just being personable. Yeah. Just be yourself, man. And that's like, I tell our sales teams all the time is like, there's no acting in this. Like people could read between the lines, sit with you, look in your eyes and know exactly who you are if you're full of shit or not. So oh, yeah, they, and people appreciate, like, if you admit that you're wrong, you admit you don't know, cause they can understand like, Hey, I, I, I could trust this person. And you could go figure out the answer later. But as soon as you try to like BS your way through and people see that, like that's probably what most people are nervous of is like trying to find the answer versus like you go sit in front of, you know, 
an interview or different things like that and you just be yourself and be like, hey, you know, I don't know the answer to that, but what I'm what I'm not going to do or, yeah, what I'm not going to do is lie to you. Yep. And you, you'll gain so much respect and traction and be like, hey, can, you know, let me go do my research and homework and get you that answer. You don't hear that these days. Like most people just come and try to always know what to say or you're trying, they're trying to figure it out and you could see them trying to figure it out. And it's like, it's not what I'm looking for. Communication. That's right. In anything in life. Yeah. You know? It's simple. Me and my wife. <laughs> you know, learning communication has been a, an amazing thing that has just made my relationship with my wife, my kid, my employees. Yep. It's it's just being open and honest. and Yeah, you got to go through what's – you have that yeah, communication with anybody. Talk about what's going well, right? Because there's always something positive to pull out of every situation, every conversation. Like there's a, there's a positive there, but also like, hey, what do we got to improve on? And if you're not sitting there and having those conversations with people at work with your wife, right? Like you're going to have those big blow ups that happen and that could all be prevented from just setting up, you know, ongoing meetings and ta- having those conversations. Yeah. Um, so I, I, you know, just popped in my head just now. I wanted to talk to you about something. I was listening to a, one of your podcasts and yeah. you talk about how you treat business as a sport or a game. That's right. Right. I want to I want to get into that and I want to I want to have you define what that means a little bit for yeah. people that haven't listened to your podcast. Yeah, it makes it fun, man. Um so like I let me def- just define a sport real quick. We'll just and I don't watch too much of them, but I understand them pretty well. So if you look at like football, you have um you have a coach, you have the quarterback, you have offense, defense, there's a scoreboard, different things like that and everybody has a crucial part of executing to win the game and you have to work as a team to win the game so same thing like inside the business is you go out on the field every single day and you have to like what for our company like we have plans we have plays we develop them and then we go execute in business and if we're not all aligned meaning human resources ops finance sales etc it's going to be you know uh not structured, nothing talking to itself, and it's just going to blow up. So if we go out and we plan and conversate and conversate and conversate and train, 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 and then we go play our plays, it's you know pretty easy to win there. Damn. So you got to you got to. There's really there's absolutely no difference because the funny thing is, a sport is a business. Have you ever uh, have you read Who Not How? No. By Dan Sullivan. Mm-mm. It's a it's an amazing book. It's about finding the right who's. So kind of like the same thing you were you were saying, right? Like comparing or taking your team and comparing it to a football team. That's Let's right. Say. Your employees or you know HR, finance, whatever. All those people need to be the right people in place that's to right. be able to handle those things. You yep. know what I mean? And yep. that's what. Creates and you're it. recruiting, right? So the same thing like in a sports team is you're recruiting people to go be on your team the same thing in business is you're recruiting people to come be on your team at work yep. and then your leader's your quarterback right and so they're making they're making the plays and throwing the ball and executing and then you go back like every day we have huddles every division they have they come back every day they have the huddle talk about how they're going to execute what they want to change okay go play the game and then we do that every single day to continue to build off because like a lot of businesses they just open up and do the same thing every day that's not how you grow. You got to talk about it and ch- keep changing the plays so you start scoring better. And then you got to measure those plays. Were you still doing that kind of stuff when you were smaller? No, not exactly. We got into like different KPIs and things like that, but the, the mental part of it didn't completely understand it um, probably till like five years ago. Gotcha. And then everybody we just defined on. So if it's like a revenue number or whatever, so it's just say, uh, a salesperson, which is for easy math, had like a monthly quote of $100,000. Yep. Like, okay, well, we needed that store to be profitable to hit 300000 So that means we need three salespeople. Okay, well, then what, what are the actions? So instead of just telling the salesperson, hey, like we need to get you to $100,000 this month, well, what? how do they get to $100,000? So you break it down. Well, if we're an outbound, let's say this sales group's an outbound sales group, well, what's our average sell? Well, let's say the average sell is $1,000. So that means we need 100 sales in the month. So right. there's 22 working days, so it's just easy math, say, like 40 sales. Um, so we need to get 40 sales in the month. 
so what is that like two three i don't know i'm doing my math wrong or right but say two to three sales a day well how many customers do we have to call to get a sale and so you go look at past data and it might say hey you call out of 25 customers you could get 10 appointments out of 10 appointments you get three sales so that means out of every 25 calls i could get three sales and that's going to hit my daily quota right so then you break it down to the easy math and you say okay like you don't even have to talk about the hundred thousand dollar number because if you say hundred thousand dollars every everybody has a different way to get there but if you just say hey all you got to do is make 25 calls and get three sales every single day you're totally fine and if somebody's doing 25 calls and not getting 10 appointments and three sales, then that says that leader should go and sit with them and listen to them and help teach them the right way to have those calls to get those numbers up. So what made you, what gave you the idea to build all those systems though? Like what I'm saying is, because when you started, it was just you and Bob, right? Yep. It was just you and Bob. And then who was the first grinding and hustling. Who's yeah. the first person you hired? My buddy, Mac. And then what was he doing, sales? Yeah, he, he worked uh, alongside of me at the dealership. Like, he was at the sushi restaurant with me. <laughs> kind of brought him everywhere. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah. Is so he still with you? That. No. No. No, okay. we're still good buddies. Yeah, awesome. Um, so he just did everything, and then you had, a, I'm assuming you brought on another guy that just did everything, and it just got crazy, or what? Yeah, I just kept duplicating myself. Mm. And that wasn't, that wasn't, like, my idea by any means. Like, I was a very, like, a perfectionist. Like, I'm the only guy who could do everything. And it was Bob to say, like, help me look around and look at all these other businesses. And you think, like, you see that building, keep the owners doing all 200 jobs in there? No. Well, dude, it's not going to be perfect. You just got to, you know, sit down with somebody, let them know what the expectations are, see if they want the expectations, teach them. They might not be 100%, maybe they're going to be 70%, but you're still good at 70%. Go, do the next thing, do the next thing, do the next thing. And then just kept running that way and was battling fires of things breaking along the way and then said, okay, well, I need to build, you know, backups, right? If this something happens with that person, there needs to be somebody that, that would cover. And so that's when you come up with, like, the leader. The, usually it's the leader that – Back in the day then, it was a one, like, let's say, Mac, just grinding it out, making the calls, cutting turf, all that stuff. When he got to a certain number, then he would hire somebody, like a yard person, to do that. And then he was doing the calls and managing the yard person. Once that was successful, then he'd hire somebody then to go do the sales. So then he would oversee the salesperson and the yard person and then continue just to stack it from there. And then you could just put math to it, and then you could just keep increasing the math on how much can we produce out of that. Very good point. <laughs> yeah, it's cool, man, because it's just like numbers. Like, go, you go start by yourself and just say, like, what can you, what's the most you can do? Like, what's the most production you can knock out? Yourself or your best person? Like, what, let's go hit it hard, right? Then you go get somebody that you go look at somebody who's doing average numbers and low numbers and you go start working with them to see what they could produce. Then you take the average of the group and say, okay, this is, uh, here's a good conservative number that we could bank on and build a business around how long did it take to get there? And you could basically forecast your numbers and all the stuff you need and you should end up there every single time. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it's very easy said and it's very easy to understand what you're saying. Um, and it's, it's not hard to do. Yeah. Um, it's actually very easy to do the reality of it. Um, so, and I took a huge wrong move um i went from like nothing to 12 employees which was big for me that's yeah, massive um and i was spread way too thin it didn't work for me i didn't have any systems in place uh so i pretty much shut down half my company we were doing different things yeah uh so i got rid of that part of my company and and now i've scaled back down now we only have four employees yeah. and now i'm implementing all of these systems and bringing in the right people to be able to grow you know what i mean and it's yeah, that's so part important. of it, dude. Like I, I went backwards like probably thirty different times to get to where I am today. Like that's really? just part of the learning. Like you and like there's no there's obviously different ways to prevent that, but if you want to be a successful business, like you need to go through that stuff. Um, like verse like there's a lot of companies that open up with systems and softwares and with funding and different things like that. Well, you're cutting out all the learning stuff that gets like business really moving off the ground. So when shit goes wrong a lot of those guys don't know how to go back and operate as like you going and starting manual and doing those different things. You're able to play the game wherever. And that happens. Like there's ups and downs in businesses oh, yeah. and we have to make changes. So like 
it's good that you experience that stuff along the way. The goal is just how to not face it again. Right. Like if you had to face a hard learning once, then how do I not go back there and do that again? I, oh, I learned all my lessons. Yeah. <laughs> not all of my lessons. I learned the ones for now. I learned the lessons of what not to do to get me back to where I was. That's right. Right. You know, so implementing systems into your business, you know, KPIs. I didn't even know what KPIs were, Yeah. you know, a year ago, to be honest with you, um, you know, master checklist, vehicle checklist for maintenance, just all go. these different things that probably sound so stupid to a lot of people, but it's so important. For sure. You, you know, know, especially when you're scaling, like you need the micro details of stuff to make sure it's dialed. Roles and responsibilities. Yep. I mean, I never had that. Now I do, you know? Yeah. So all these little things that are going to be able to bring in more people to be able to scale the business, like salespeople or admin yeah. or HR or whatever. Dude, you know, it's funny, like you get it dialed to that point, like on how you're operating, you touch everything. Then you bring in other leaders and you want them to operate that same way, but they have to, the heart, the hardest part about like, um, like owning a business is you, it's like your child and you have to watch your child go through the same hard learnings for that other leader to get acclimated. So like you want to say like, Hey, here's the things, here's how we operate. Here's how we do it. But that leader is going to go like want to try their ideas and you have, and you know, like, Hey, that's going to fuck some stuff up, but you guys will never be on the same page unless you let them go through it. And it's hard to watch, hard to see, but then they're going to go through it and be like, okay, I get it. And then they're going to be the best advocate for those systems and processes and checklists and different things like that. Damn. It's that's just how it goes, dude. (laughs) So much patience. Yeah, it's brutal. And then sometimes, like, the, the hardest part is sometimes those leaders don't make it. So you go through that, and then you, you, you could just never get them to that point. And then you kind of got to go restart. That's, like, the kick in the nuts a little bit. So what do you do now? Like, what is your – because, I mean, I'm assuming you have roles and responsibilities in your business. What is yeah. what is your role and your responsibility in your business with having so many people and so many people in place to do so many things? Yeah, so there's I have two crucial roles as the visionary and educator. So I um, I have this knowledge now of being there for 11, 12 years. Nothing to do with me founding the company or anything like that, but I've been through the start to where we are now and touched every single piece of it. So I have the information, um, and I have a lot of people that are a hell of a lot smarter than I am. They just need the information that's in my head to go and execute the way you know, we want them to go execute. So I spend my time, all of my time with people. If that's with front lines, if it's re- with leadership, whatever, like I'll buckle up with them day in and day out that I watch them, then I'll go run it. They watch me and we'll go back and forth and do that. Um, so that's how I'm doing the education part, but being in there and being in the weeds and the details that helps me be the visionary on here's what we got to change. Here's what we got to do different in our business to continue to win. So that's where I spend my time. So like at the last almost three months now, I've been in the warehouse. Like loading and unloading trucks? Yeah. I do a little bit about a little bit of that. Try not to as much as I used to. Like I used to be like, I'm just going to outwork every motherfucker in, <laughs> you know? Um, but like this year is a little bit different where there's been a couple of days where I had to, like we had to do that just because stuff going on and just some plays had to be made. Um, but I like tell the team, like I get on that forklift, like, I will whoop everybody's ass in here easy, like on operating it. Like I know how yeah. to, I know how to get down on those things. Um, but it's if we're having to get the CEO to operate to make sure orders go out, that's a massive problem. Right. So I'll, I'll be there with the team, but try to make the right plays where we're able to execute without any of that stuff happening. See, it's a struggle, man. Yeah. So I just sit there and watch. I talk to them. I listen to them and. They, the, your frontline people and your customers will have all the answers and everything you got to do and change in business. Like, it's pretty easy. Like, you just grab that information and then you just got to go and apply it. Wow. Damn. I so, think I needed this more than. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's good, man. It's um, a good conversation. Yeah. No, um, you know, I think the, uh, a problem that I, that, I mean, it, this isn't about me, but I have a problem of getting on because we do commercial pressure washing. We're a huge commercial pressure washing business. We do a ton of different large industrial properties every night. And I, if I go out in the field and I just like, I can't just stand there. I have to like, I take over from them and it's just that like, yeah, no, and it's good to do it with them. But um, like, 
the, what I've learned the best is always go and observe because it's very easy to go in there and you're going to see things are done probably a different way than you would do it. Right. But if you sit there and watch like just, and you get be patient, a lot of times you'll see that, fuck, they figure out a better way. But if you rush in and make a change and it's, you don't get to see that. And so you have to be very patient and sometimes it, yeah, it's not the right way, but watch it for a while. Do you ever get like a feeling of guilt from what? Like that, that's the reason that I take over is I feel guilty that they are oh, like out here busting their ass and I'm standing there watching. For sure. So I, I'm not ever standing there watching. Like I'm with the leader or with the person in teaching. So like I'll spend that time to observe, um, like to get a real good understanding of what's going on. Why is this a play? Why are we operating this way? And then I'll go in and spend time one-on-one with if it's a leader, if it's a frontline person or whatever. But if I'm with a frontline person, I have their leader with me and say, I'll get to know them as people. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm a, a warehouse associate. I'm not the CEO. You're not going to fucking fired for anything you do. Like, I'm just here to learn. Let me watch what we got going on. And then, I'm, okay, cool. Now you watch me and then we'll compare it and then find out the best way. And the leader's watching because then I'm, we're making like good change there versus like I'm getting to somebody's stuff and destroying it. They do it. I do it. Go back and forth. Cool. That's good. Next thing, next thing, document it. Here's going to be the new process. Let's keep moving. Just constantly learning. Yeah, but you have to bring, like, you can't, um, like, if you have to have somebody with you the whole time because you want to always be training who your replacement's going to be and who's going to be, who's really responsible for that the whole time. Damn, that's so good. Because it's easy, it's easy to go ahead and make decisions, but you're cutting out somebody else's education that needs to be learning the conversation and the things that you're doing. Yep. So, like, if you want to go take over, that's, that's totally cool, but whoever you took over for, like, it, you need them to learn the traits and the habits that you built. So have them be paired up with you doing whatever you're doing and explaining the reasons why the whole time. And have the understanding of why those decisions are being made. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And I just tell people, like, hey, man, like, I because I, it's true. Like, I want to see people successful. I want to see them grow. Mm-hmm. Like, I might, like, if you want to learn, I will invest into you. And if you want to get to the top of the company, let's get you to the top of the company. But I'm going to be extremely mm-hmm. transparent on what you do good and what you do bad. And we just need to be able to make adjustments and we'll get you there. Damn. Cause like, I don't, there's no roof of growth in my business, probably not in yours either. And the only way for us to get there is the person under us needs to come up. So like, like I talked to our whole company and I'm like, for us to grow, you guys need to grow. Like everybody, like I'm waiting for you guys to level up for our company to level up. So when you're ready, I'm ready. And then I just go, go around and division by division, you'll find the, you know, the diamonds in there that people just have the grit, the want, the will. They're always asking the questions and like, you're my person. Like we're spending some time together. That's fucking sick. Yeah. It's cool, man. And you just notice like, it's hard to like, um, like see what people like you, you just see what they have in them. But like, you're always trying to like, think like, Hey, this person, I want them to be the leader. I want them to do this. And you're like, well, they don't have this. You don't have this, but you never, they don't, they never really had the shot to show it. Yeah. So when you go ahead and put them into that spot to go show it, you'll be surprised sometimes on like what some of these people could show you. It's like, it's amazing. And so that's why, like when we're talking about like negative people and different things like that is like some people just never had the shot in life. And if you're the one to give them the time and invest in them and have the conversation, like you, you could turn a lot of stuff around. Damn, dude. So is that is that kind of where the do good movement comes into place? Yeah, dude. Because yeah. I really believe, like, I was like, no shit, like normal, and I still consider myself a normal dude. But like when I say like normal, like ninety nine percent of society on how they think, how they work, different things like that. Like that was eleven years ago, you know, pretty normal dude. Yeah. And there's this one guy that saw this opportunity to me, and I was not perfect. I can't tell you how many meetings Bob and I had of like button heads and different things like that and him having to like go against the you know the grit to like get me to where he needs me and um like it's my life's great you know (laughs) so it's just like I know other people have it in them they just don't know that their self like I didn't think I would ever like I wanted to right like everybody has a stream of success oh yeah like I wanted it I never thought like I could be that guy everybody has a different definition of success too you know what I mean yeah like I mean, people want, you know, to be financially free. They want to be just happy in their family or whatever it is. Like, 
I look at myself as the most successful human on this earth because I do whatever I want whenever I want and yeah. I'm able to spend time with my family and right. see different places and do different things and make amazing, new relationships. Man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Am I a multi multi millionaire? No. Yeah. I will be one day. That's right. But for now, I'm good. Yep. You know, so I'm, I'm starting to curve my life a little bit. Um, like some of the plays that I've been making and people I've been training and stuff like that to get a little bit of time back to the, what your success is. That's the next thing I'm shooting for where I have all of that time with my family. Yeah. Cause I can, like I could stop working whenever, but I'm going to slow down the opportunity and the growth we have. And we have this moment of time in our industry right now to just attack where every second I put in now will change like my bloodline forever. And if I don't act appropriately, like I could just piss it out the window. That's so so that, scary. Yeah. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm playing with right now. Yep. We're going to switch places. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. man. <laughs> oh man. So, uh, explain the do good movement. Yeah. So I started this, uh, the, the podcast movement, whatever you want to call it, um, to help people. So like we donate, uh, like our companies donate money and we've been doing it for years and then you never see like the results of that money right you see like the instant gratification of like wherever that money went um, but then it ends right and so I'm like hey, I don't have enough money to like change the world and so how do we help people um, like get to where they want to get in life because it's not necessarily money but money could change a lot of things and help a lot of people but if you don't know how to handle money, you're going to keep burning through it, right? And yeah. so um, started the Do Good Movement to help out society, to help people reach their maximum potential. Like, in as I talked about earlier, my story, you know, a little bit of your story is, like, there, there's been different people along the way that helped push us and pull it out of us to get us to where we are today. And so this whole podcast movement is just about real-life education, like the real shit that goes on be behind the scenes to develop the right characters and behaviors and identity to go ahead and win at your life. And that's what I spend. Like I learn all this stuff in business, all these different things. And I bring it back to the show and just talk about it um, just to help change people's lives, man. That's and awesome. that, that's what motivates me and drives me. So when you talk about like having the ambition to keep going these next levels is like, as I grow in business, that's more content that I'm able to give through like life lessons that I learned there to be able to give back to um, other people wanting to, you know, succeed in whatever it is. And it's not majority of the stuff I talk about there is not even financial. Yeah. And that's good. Yeah. Because finances, I mean, you need money, but financial isn't everything. That's right. You know? And uh, like, so and the way I see it is like you're trying to be everybody's Bob. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, what, that's 100%, man. And that's, that's awesome. where that's where it came from. Like that that I I will never forget like that somebody's been able to just like flip that switch in me and I'm like everybody has that fucking switch in them yeah. and it just it's just one word away, a conversation away to help them turn on. And it's um there's just different things that motivate people to want to be different and hopefully some of the content on there does that and I get tons of messages on how it's changed people's lives and I show it to my wife. I'm like, this is why we do this thing. You know, this is why, this is why I put in this time. This feels so good, huh? Yeah. Cause like at the end of the day, like there's things that go on in this world that we can't control. You know, this war goes off, like we're all fucking out of business. Oh, it's, oh, well, we're not going to get it. Yeah. Right. Or the <laughs> bank, all. or you talk about the banking system and different things like that. There's a lot of things that are out of our control that control our life today. And so, like, what else have we done along the way to feel good if everything was stripped away from us? And so that's, like, a key thing to me is if everything was stripped from me today, we, I'd be the happiest man alive, man, because I've done a lot of serving and a lot of things that where other people, their switch is now turned on where they're able to go execute and live the life that they've always wanted to live. Good for you. Yeah, and that's, that's what motivates me. Like, I have toys and all that kind of stuff, but that just helps get me, like, a... Like, it's like having a drink of Red Bull to get me through the next couple of weeks, you know? Really? Yeah. You got some badass toys, though. Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> it's been a dream, right? Since I was a kid, like, you, you dream of these things, and we owe it to ourselves when you start achieving things to whatever that dream is, whether you care about it right now or not. Like, you owe it to yourself to, in, to make the purchase or whatever that dream is, vacation, who knows? 
Like you have to go do it to show, hey, I set out this promise for myself. I went through all the shit. Now I got it. Yeah. And that's really kind of what that whole thing is. Like I don't, I don't even use all the shit I have. Like there's stuff that's just been sitting there for like a year and haven't even used it. Some of the dirt bikes and shit. Like sand cars. Um, just got a boat, bought a boat maybe a week or two ago. Haven't, it's been a dream boat since I was a kid. Never used it. I oh, know. I saw it. That's sick. Yeah. I don't know when I'll go use it. Right. So it's just like, those are just, those are like personal things. I have this whole list in my garage just of different things that I want to achieve in life around like faith and giving and family and toys and all that stuff. And I look at it and I have to, like, I need to make sure all those boxes are checked off. And a lot of times I buy it, check it off. Cool. Well, could sell it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Like you don't even use it? Uh, some of them. No, probably not. Like I might use a boat. We'll see. It's just like one of those things that you just yeah, you have just, to cross uh, off because it was a goal. Yeah. It's just discipline, man. That's badass. Damn. Because if you get, because you'll go through time. Like if you don't, like even the good, like we talked about checking off like a lot of the bad things and going through the struggle. So yeah. even like the good things, like you got, you owe it to yourself to check it off. So like next thing you say, like, hey, I want to go achieve this. Well, if you didn't check off the last, last box, you're going to be along the mission, along the way of uncomfort to you. And you're going to say, eh, I didn't check it off last time. It's like, I don't care. Like, whatever. I'll move on. Man. So just discipline. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah, life's a trip, dude. <laughs> so the stable. Yeah. <laughs> you just, I mean, what, what are you going to do? You're, I mean, are you just going to sell it off, all of it? No, we're turning that into like a whole fucking thing. So, um, like I've had this turf business like before my wife and like, that's, that's my baby. That's my thing. And I got her listening. Like she's starting to kind of like get in the groove of like, she's just naturally in shape, like natural, pretty girl, which like, you know, fortunate to be that way, but she didn't choose that. Right. Like right. God chose that. So I'm like, Hey, like let's, let's start getting on some of these habits. So she's exercising, she's listening to some podcasts, different stuff like that. And like, she's very, very smart. And, um, business has served me in many ways, like especially all the bad stuff in business. It helped me like personally. So um, her and I started a business together that we launch um, next month. It's called, uh, so that's what the stable is. That's a, It's been something I've been working on for like a year, but it's called Piston Stables. So I'm building, um, we already have one of our facilities and it's just the most state of the art, um, basically toy garages that you'd probably ever see in your life. And it has a bunch of cool shit and I'm opening it up for like the community, uh, like for kids to dream, to touch, to feel all that kind of stuff and to go into the stables and want to set them up in all different places. Um, we're going to buy and sell stuff, right? So there's going to be a, a profit center there, but it's going to basically be this like dream center for like kids and people to go like sit in and touch and rev up the cars and do different things to be like, I want one of these and then could get them, you know, onto the do good movement, different things and help give them that, you know, that life path on how to get there. Do you believe in manifestation? 100% dude. Did you manifest a lot of this shit back in your day? For sure. Like Crazy. I've always manifested, like I just want this garage of like all this cool stuff. You know? Really? But then you get it and okay, now how do I make this like serve people? And, you know, I'm also a business guy, so I want to get an ROI out of it. Yeah. And so we're able to put those two things together. Amazing. So like that when like early we we're talking about being a kid, like buying and selling stuff, like I that's all I do in turf. Like I, I, the cool yeah. thing about turf is I could it's replaceable. Like I could buy containers and containers and containers and keep selling it. But I still have this like love for like um cars, trucks, boats, sand cars, all that kind of stuff. And I just love I don't and most of the time I don't even make money on the shit. Like I might on the cars and trucks? Yeah. Sometimes I just buy it, put a ton of money into it, and sell to make my money, but it's just like, I just enjoy it. It's like a hobby. Damn. So that's just like something fun I get to do that's different than grass. Yeah. You know? It's cool that you're able to take the exact same, like, business model that you have and use it in so many different aspects of life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, with buying and selling turf, buying and selling cars. Man, I think that's absolutely amazing. You're going to give all these kids an opportunity to just... Go hang, sit yeah, hang in badass out, sand cars or whatever. Yeah, just have conversation, different things like that. Are you like going to open one out here? Uh, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. 
we have a couple other additions that we're going to be building into to make like a really good community. Um, and I'll, I don't want to talk about it, but yeah, you'll, like you, you'll get everybody will see it in the next like few years. That's it's awesome. Gonna be, it's just going to be different than what's out there. And it's really just to bring communities and networks together around cool things. And like, obviously it'd be cool to talk about like, uh, becoming mentally tough and all that stuff, but that only suits so many people. And so, like, what's the carrot to get them into that? Because, like, that's what changes people's life is some of the conversations that we're having today, some of the stuff that I have on my show. Um, but how do you get people into that? And a lot of it starts with that shiny object that people get attracted to. Like, every person likes a sexy car or different things like that. So you get them into that, and then they're like, wow. And then you, then you start being able to build story time from it, and then they now get into – the loop and it's able to start now changing them and like, okay, I want that. How do I get there? Well, this is what you got to go do. You willing to do it? You could have it. It's like a, well, no, I don't want to compare it to that because I feel like that might be like a negative outlook, but like a lot of like the click funnel stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Is like, that's a big way to acquire like, you know, like look at this Lambo, you can have it too. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's but not like there's not like any kind of like raffle or any, there's no monet monetate. I don't know how to say it. Uh, you don't have to. Mo we're not monetizing it, right? It's right. but it's more for people to like see it and like imagine yourself and manifest yourself having it. And then here's a path how how to go get it. It starts with you. Now go develop you, and you develop you, and you build you to become your best self. You get whatever you want in life. And so it's a way to attract people into changing them. Like again, I don't. Like I don't have a lot of time to begin with in the turf business and a couple other things that do pay me a lot of money. This whole piss and stable thing isn't going to pay me like anything. Right. You know, it's just for like the care and love for people and that whole the switch that Bob turned on me and hoping to be able to do that through there. So crazy. Yeah. Were you always like this? Like, did you always want to be the person to give so much back? And I, I mean – not to sound like selfish or anything, but like obviously you had to focus on yourself first yeah. so you can get to the point to where you can give so much back, right? Yep. But, I mean, were you manifesting the thought of like being able to give so much back to your community back in the day? No. It was everything was about me. Like I was, it was very transactional, all about money, like didn't give a shit. Like it was nothing's getting in my way to make the dollar. And then it felt like extremely empty. Like people say, hey, it's lonely at the top, right? And it's like, well, no, it's not. But how I used to operate, yeah, it wasn't good. And like burning relationships, doing different things. And you start, you know, living in the house that you wanted. You start driving the cars you wanted and there's nobody else like around, right? Because you burnt a lot of people and did some of the wrong things. And then you go back and you say, well, what makes me feel good? Because like I went to like a couple of times in my life, just been in this like empty place. And didn't like it, you know, like, cause it's like, Hey, I thought you go, go start making money, have a business. You have like these toys, like you're just going to be a happy person. And so I go along this journey and it stopped becoming fulfilling. And I'm like, Hey, like this, this sucks, you know, like, and I'm like started super young. So I experienced this in a younger part of my life. And I look like, dude, I got a long way to go and I'm already feeling like this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so started to say, well, what, what makes me feel good? And there's been a couple um, people um, that came into my business that were, you know, felons in prison and different things like that. And, you know, it's hard to get a job when you, yeah. when you're, you know, when that stuff's under record. So bring started with bringing a couple of these guys in the business and uh, grooming them and watching them grow in the business. And they have families today and they're extremely successful, right? And I'm like, that made me feel good. And so seeing, like, other people and start making those paths in their life, through the education and opportunities that I have given them, that's where I'm like, that doesn't end. Cause then you're able to continue to see, like I still watch a lot of them and continue to see them stack it. And that's like, that stuck with me. So ever since like that big changing point, like I focused a lot on people and, um, I believe like, and I tell my business too, like screw the transaction, screw the dollars. Like we have KPIs, fuck that too call people because you know you could serve them and get them more time back, d help different things inside their business that's going to help their life. Figure out what to do right to people, and you're going to make money. You're going to hit your sales. Yeah, the money will come. 
Yeah. Build and the relationship and be there for people. Yeah. If you're sitting with somebody and we don't have the right product for them, tell them, hey, like, I don't have the right product for you. Like, go buy from this company. Like, if you just focus it, and that's, like, how I base my life. I just focus around other people and, and serving people. Like, everything will show up for you. You just got to have faith, you know? Absolutely. That's some fucking good advice, dude. Thanks, man. It's a big step, too. Like, it sounds crazy i'm sure to like a lot of people but if you just focus you literally just focus on other people and just say like i don't fucking care about me man i just want to make sure you're good people will always make sure you're good and you don't reverse psychology it is reverse psychology but you can't go in it with it like hey if i do this i should get this right like you just go in like not giving a fuck besides making sure people are satisfied and happy and like you you will be taken care of yep in every every single way it might not be business. It might be something personally or whatever, but, like, you're taken care of. Damn. You know, like, when you give somebody – here, like, let's talk about this. You know, like, when you give somebody a gift? Yep. You know when you get a gift? Yep. Like, you get a gift and you kind of feel weird a little bit? Yeah. But when you give a gift, you feel really fucking good? Yeah, same thing. It's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, so if you – that feeling of, like, if you could just be given those gifts every single day – like you feel like you're on top of the world. Like it doesn't fucking matter what anybody says, what's going on. Like, you know, you've helped people and like nothing else really matters. That was a really good analogy. Yeah, thanks. It took a while to get to that. <laughs> well, it's like that thing perspective, right? Not everybody sees the things the same. So That's right. You know, being able to describe that in a different way or I guess dumb it down a little bit, you know? Yep. It made a lot of sense. Yeah, dude. It's a... Uh, I don't know. Like a lot of people chase the wrong stuff, man. Yeah, it's sad. It's sad to it's sad to see that because people want the same things, but they're led. Um, they're they just been taught the the wrong way on how to go get those things. So I mean, like the Bad Beat podcast um, is, you know, in the beginning of the conversation, you said, you know, I I didn't have a bad life. I I didn't have that story of. Um, you know, all these struggles, we lived a good life and that's awesome. I have nothing against that ever. Yeah. Uh, you know, the bad beat podcast was basically about, uh, you know, how to turn shitty hands into wins. Yep. Right. Um, and you know, overcoming the struggles, overcoming the hardships, all of that stuff is still the same thing. And, and, you know, I've been through a lot of my shit or yeah. a lot of, a lot of shit in my life, uh, a lot of hard shit that I've had to overcome. And that's, that's right. the entire reason I started this. It's amazing, you know? man. And and I've had a ton of people reach out to me and thanking me, and and it's it's just been an insane amount of fulfillment, and just makes me so happy that. And it doesn't matter. I'm not. I don't think I'm going to change the world. Yeah. Right. But you if I could change, change one person's right. life, it makes everything worth it to yeah. me. Yeah. So you I was know? happy to come on here, man. I I respect and appreciate people that do this. You know, to give back to society to help people. And the way you're doing it's cool because you have other people on and get for them to tell their stories. Like, you, if you don't already, very soon you'll have a story that's able to probably connect with every single person. And that one story, being able to see where somebody is or was and now where they are, like, will give them hope to go ahead and get there. Yeah, man. And that, like, if it just changes one life, it's worth every second that went into it, you know? Because there's a lot of people on the edge, especially at, like the society's beat the fuck up the last three years. Yeah, it I just mean, <laughs> feels weird these days, you know, COVID and, you know, financial hardships and, and people went through a lot of shit. Yeah, you know? there's something going on. And when that thing's over, there's always there's this next big yeah. thing. Like, it's just it's been weird the last few years. You just But you got to be able to play the game. Yeah, you got to you got to have a, another play in your back pocket, just like you said, you know. Yeah. So beat like all the stuff going on, like beat that, like make it a little bit more difficult on yourself. So all this other stuff that comes across the dash, like, oh, dude, this is another day in the office, like whatever. Yeah. You know? It's awesome. Man, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, you know, typically I ask uh, everybody on if, if you could give anybody, a, like, one piece of advice, the main piece of advice that got you to where you are today. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think that would be? Don't quit. It's as simple as that. It's like we talked about it earlier. It's, it's right on the other side. Just when you set something out for yourself that you want to do, that you want to accomplish, right when you feel like quitting – like you're about to fucking win. Just don't, don't quit and keep pushing and you'll find something through that. It might, and it's, it will serve you like 1000%. Yeah, man. Cool. 
Well, I appreciate you jumping on here, Dylan. Yeah, appreciate uh, you having me. It's an amazing conversation. If you guys want to go check out the Do Give Movement, uh, streaming on all platforms, uh, YouTube, Spotify, yeah, Apple Podcast. I listen to you on Apple Podcasts. I think that's like the best way. Okay. Um, but yeah, man, go check him out. He's got some amazing knowledge that he's dropping on society. Um, and yeah, man, I appreciate you coming out, dude. Thanks awesome for having time. me, man. This is amazing. Thank you, guys. Thank you.